Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. This is part 4 of the Verlay integration tutorials. I will be tackling chains and fabric. So as you can see here, what we'll be making today are uh, chains that are made of segments and uh, also clots that resemble, uh, in a way, fishnets. So, let's pick up where we left last time. Last time we tackled boxes. Let's comment out this really quick and let's dive into it. So first of all, we'll need to define a uh, chain function. This function will take uh, an x, a y, and uh, this time we need a segment length and a number of segments or a number of points for arguments. We also need um, to add the radius and the thickness and color same for the box uh, texture or structure sorry so uh, keep in mind that the thickness color arguments are added here just in case we, we wanted to expand on these functions later on so first of all let's define the points list this list will contain points that basically we we need these points to be uh, separated by length of seg lengths, uh, segs l, segs underscore l, which in, in this case is 10. So every, so here for example, what I'm doing is I'm adding i times seg l for every i in range of a uh, number of segments. So basically it will create consecutive, consecutive points that will be separated by uh, segs underscore L uh, in their, their X uh, coordinates. Second, we'll need to create a joints list. So basically it will just be uh, the indexes of two of each uh, two consecutive points. So I and I plus one for I in range of len of points minus one. Really simple here. Len of uh, points and minus one because we don't want it to throw an uh, out of range error, index out of range error. Now we return the shape of points and joints. Okay, so now let's define a shape. Uh, let's do equal chain and let's just for example let's say we want uh, we want a hundred segments so segs l equals 100 and let's call the simulate shape on uh, on this shape simulate shape of shape Okay, so what we would be getting is something uh, that looks like this. So a simple chain or a rope with a lot of segments. So now that we, we got the hang of uh, how to do chains, well, we want first of all to have pinned points, meaning that we need certain points on the on the structure not to move or to be sta static. So uh, we're gonna have to add a new argument to the shape function. It's going to be pinned. And this pinned is a list that will contain all the points that will not be moving throughout the simulation. So uh, let's define the pinned list as, for example here, uh, let's just take the first point and the last point, so points of zero and points of, points of minus one. So now let's go back to the shape function and let's add it to our arguments. So it's going to be pinned and let's default it to an empty list. And let's add it to the dictionary. So pinned and colon pinned. Okay, now we need to uh, to call in the move shape, we need the points, uh, we need to move 
only the points that are not pinned meaning that we'll do uh, if not p in shape of pinned then we would move p otherwise we wouldn't move it so basically that's it and keep in mind now that we need to uh, to adjust the constraint shape function because otherwise it won't work so I went ahead and deleted the deleted the uh, update calls here and I defined two variables p1 and p2 for the points so p1 is the first point of the joint p2 is the second one and here we're gonna have three cases so if p1 is p1 and p2 are not pinned okay this is what the statement stands for here we will need to update both of them like uh, we d we used to do normally so we'll add update x to uh, the x coordinates and we'll uh, add update y to the y coordinates of the po first point and for the second one we'll uh, subtract them from it and now the second case is if p1 is uh, is not pinned and p2 is pinned so if not p1 in shape of pinned and p2 in shape of pinned in that case we want to update them by double the values of update x and update y and the third case is the uh, symmetric case to this one so it's if p2 is not pinned and p1 is pinned technically here we need to do the same thing so we're going to be updating them by double the values. Uh, so 2 times update x and 2 times update y. Alright, so now let's go ahead and uh, see what that looks like. Let me correct some typos and let's run it. So you can see here that we have uh, the first and last point of the, of the series of, um, of segments that are pinned, meaning that they stay where they are and they don't uh, react to gravity or anything. They only react to uh, user input. All right, now that we finalized the chain, you can still play around with it and say what you see what you can do with it. Um, now I'm gonna define a function for the fabric. So in the same way, it's going to have uh, arguments here that are x and y I defaulted them to 100 by 100 100 100 for each and we need a number of points horizontally and number of points vertically that's what numh and numv stand for so numh uh, here is defaulted to 10 numv is 5 and the third the uh, other argument that we need is the i the i here what what it means is basically the width and length of uh, and uh, yeah and length of uh, or height of the uh, eyes of the fishnet. So now we need to define the points. Basically, what we want is a grid of points. So uh, we need to so for each row, for example, so for the first row here, uh, we need to create the first point at position 100, 100, and then jump. Uh, a distance which is equivalent to the value of i and then create another one and then jump another distance of which is equivalent to i and uh, which is 15 and then uh, create a, a third point etc until we have uh, num h points and we want to do that process uh, num v times so we'll have num v a uh, number of rows which will be equal to num v that's what I did with the call of points here. So the next thing is we want to define a joints. So the joints will be comprised of two separate lists which, which will be joining afterwards. The first one is consecutive points except for uh, the last point of each row. It won't have a successor. Uh, so you should imagine them as horizontal uh, links between the points and th so the condition to avoid having the the point at the at the end of each line or each row connect with the first point 
of the row that's uh, that, that, that comes after it is by having i modulo num h different than num h minus 1. Okay, so now we need the second part of the joints list, which will be basically uh, i and i plus num h. So we'll be taking a, uh, or defining a joint between i and i plus num h, and then jumping uh, to one, for example, first point and then first point plus num h. So, uh, let me just define the pinned points as being the uh, zero, middle and last point. Okay, so this is what we need to be imagining about, about the points here and the, and the joints between them. This is what we created. Uh, let me just hear uh, the call for the loops because apparently uh, I had them reversed. So I need to call the 4j loop for first and then for i loop. Uh, so basically this is what we get after running the uh, the function, the simulate function on this shape. Um, so this is, this will be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope uh, this series of videos was instructive or helpful in any way possible. Thank you.